Hey, welcome to part 3 of the view model tutorial series for Maya. I'm going to do an overview of the reload animation process, but first let's cover a couple issues that you might have run into in the previous videos. Firstly, if you had double transformations on your mesh while you were rigging, that's because our meshes are children of the main gun body mesh, so we want to take them out and make sure they're all on the same level and nothing is a child of anything else. The second thing is if you are trying to add any custom scripts to your shelf and you're running into the issue reload is not defined, we just want to come up and edit our shelf script and add the line import import lib as well as the prefix import lib over here. You can also just use imp as you can see here in one of my other scripts. Most of the time that should sort it out, but in cases such as BS controls, we're going to need to do the same for any scripts that reload the tool inside the script. So navigating to documents, Maya, version number and scripts, let's open up the BS controls UI in notepad and we can see I've edited it here on lines 12 and 14 comparing it to an older version which doesn't have these changes. So this isn't a tutorial on how to animate. If you don't know the basics in any software, I'd recommend going off and learning about keyframes, tangents, how to do a bouncing ball, etc. so that you're able to make the most of the things covered in the rest of this video. That being said, here's the rundown on animating in Maya. You've got your timeline down the bottom here, which will show you ticks for any keys on your selection. Right now I have the idle pose keyed on frame zero. And you can see that reflected in the channel box where every channel has a dark red tick. If I move to a different frame, the tick turns light red, which means that they're still keyed, but not on this particular frame. This is important to pay attention to because you can have keys on individual channels like so. They're not linked, even though they all show up as the same looking tick in the timeline. Real quick, you can set your frame rate here. I recommend 30 FPS and you can toggle auto keying here if you'd like. I'd also make sure if you have any layers on your controls that they aren't set to T or R in the layers tab. Opening up the graph editor, which you can access via window, animation editors, you can see all of our channels and you can view them individually or shift select for multiple. The graph editor is a great place to do polish for fine tuning your tangents and curves of each channel. As a quick example, let me add some appeal to the transition between these two positions. I'm inserting keys on each channel giving them different kinds of easing and overshoots. Breaking them down individually lets you focus a bit more and really understand what kind of curves will lead to the feeling that you want to get out of your animation. All right, so I'm starting my reload animation with a rough pass or blocking out. And the first thing I'm doing is figuring out my mag out pose. I'm taking a bit of time to pose the fingers because they'll be on the mag like this for a while, even though it's not too visible from our perspective. It just saves me from having to rework them later. I've also quickly taken the trigger finger out because our disembodied guy practices good firearm safety. Now you can see me adding some in-between poses, figuring out what kind of anticipation I want before the gun raises up, as well as the breakdown that will inform the arc of the gun barrel. Arcs are perfect for giving your animation a feeling of flow. And in view model, the tip of the gun is one of the primary places that people tend to feel the effect of nice arcs. Try turning on motion paths or tracing it with your eye to see what kind of arc your transitions have. It might look like I'm adding a fair bit of detail this early on, and I am, but I'm also working in stepped preview. That means right now there's no interpolation between my keys. I'm in complete control of what my posing is, so I'm okay with figuring out all my actions this early on. You can absolutely animate in spline though, or in separate passes for the gun, hands, and detail, whatever works best for you. At the end of the day, it's the result that matters. So for the mag out, I'm again thinking about the arc. My idea for the motion is that it curves in a really satisfying way as it moves off screen. I'm laying down some keys for a little weapon reposition so that there's some motion happening while the new mag is being grabbed. It's important to research and understand how different guns function. So with the AK, it's making sure to get that rocking motion for the mag for its insertion. I'm also trying to keep the back of the receiver feeling quite stable in screen space to give the player the feeling that the gun is being supported by the stock. For the rest of this block out, I'm figuring out the return to idle, also known as the B2I or back to idle, which is a place you can get super creative and also fit in some more nice arcs. I'm also making sure that the final frame is the same as the starting frame, which is pretty ideal if you're animating for a game. Let's stop to look at the result. The stepped preview makes it feel like it's a super low frame rate, but if you squint, you can see everything is laid out, all the poses are there, and the timing and the flow of the reload is in place. Again, if you prefer starting in spline, that's totally okay. Your rough pass might look different to this, but as long as you've got the structure and timing of your reload figured out so you can go over it and refine it more, you'll be in a good spot. If you're animating for games, this is a great point to get feedback or test it out in-game, 
so you can see or get notes on what might need changing before you start refining it more. Moving into the first pass, where I'm diving into the spline. Here's where I'm going to be in the graph editor a lot, adjusting the tangents of each channel individually. To make the most of my block out, I've done copied pairs on all my major poses, which means for any length of time that I want to hold a pose for, I put a copy of that key at the end right when it's supposed to transition. That'll help keep your intended timing, rather than result in a spline that looks like this. A lot of my polish here is just making sure each channel doesn't have any fully static parts and giving everything overshoots and settles to taste. You don't want to have too much texture and motion, especially in areas where the gun is being held stable, but a little bit of drift in each channel helps give the animation some life. I'm also fixing tangents in places where they mess up the smoothness of the curve, in general trying to keep things as tidy as possible. Don't get too caught up in having perfect curves though, because again at the end of the day it's the result, not how good your graph editor looks, that matters. This pass is where you can make sure that your arcs are flowing correctly, in case there's interpolation from your block out which gives him some stutters or strange paths. The very last thing I do is camera animation, which is kept pretty subtle, but has each axis complement the actions that are happening throughout the reload, just to add a touch more impact to things like the mag in. So now we have a complete reload animation. I would consider this a first spline pass, although I've added a bit more finger detail than I usually would if it was for a real project. At this point, we can take a look at the overall animation and get feedback on how it feels. I can already see some places that I'm not very happy with, which we can address in another video on how to receive, apply, and also give feedback. But right now, it's good enough. So, please let us know what parts of the process you'd love a deeper dive on. We'd love to get into the nerdy gritty of your model animation in the future. Hopefully very soon, you'll see a few shorter videos pop up covering some more technical stuff. I'll catch you next time, and as always, happy animating!